Hi, guys. I don't believe it. It is actually, as much as it can be, a spectacularly gorgeous winter day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is It is a Monday, January 16th, 2022. And I am once again glad to be here with my, my trail pal, Elliot Jacobson, somehow the the Rowan and Martin of the Doomosphere have <laughs> uh, have shown back up together, and uh, so today, guys, we're going to get into the whole subject of getting out there and enjoying it while you still can, and carpe diem, and this whole subject. And I don't know if this is going to be a friendly debate. That uh, are we going to are, are, are we going to uh, are we going to pull the gloves off? <laughs> so anyway, guys, I am getting ready to uh, get out there and enjoy it while I still can for the next several weeks. So tomorrow I'm heading out of here and driving to Austin, Texas, getting on a plane, flying to Cancun, getting on a bus, going to Belize, coming back to Austin. And I'm going to party at South by Southwest at the biggest music festival of the Year. So I plan to have some fun in my life, getting out there and enjoying it in the next uh, few months. So that's what we want to talk about. But specifically, what I want to hear from Elliot, we're, we're, we're going to go back to our uh, soft white underbelly, uh, those famous soft white underbelly interviews that got both of us in, in so much trouble with the normies. Uh, so understand, guys, Elliot could not hear my interview. I could not hear Elliot's interview. All right. So you guys follow me. So I went in there and ended my interview at Soft White Underbelly, like I do all my interviews and, and, and really went overboard, you know, explaining to Mark and the normies you know, get out there and enjoy it while you still can. As I told him, I close every one of my interviews with get out there and enjoy it while you still can. And talked about that for a few minutes and signed off. Elliot did not hear me say that, although he's heard me say it for maybe a hundred thousand times over the, and for 14 years and uh, so then, so I didn't hear his interview until the day it came out. And I turn on his interview. This is like two weeks later. And I hear this dude talking all kinds of trash about these doomers saying, get out there and enjoy it while you still can. <laughs> totally trash talking. So I want you to go, so Elliot, I want you to come on and tell the people either what you said or what you meant to say. And then we will go from there. And then I will, you tell me what you, what you said, and then I will ex explain what I said. And then we're going to find our differences and similarities. So if, if we were really good at technology, uh -huh. then what I would have done is preloaded those little sections from our talks <laughs> off of Soft White Underbelly and play them for the people. And, and then they would hear exactly what you said. Well, people know what you said, right? Because they always hear you say at the end of everything, you know, get out there and enjoy drying your clothes while you still can, right? Get out there and enjoy chainsawing down a tree while you still can. I mean, I mean, that is your thing, right? Whatever the day has in it for you. You you hold that thing out and say that that can have value, you know. Well, you I will expand upon that in a minute. That's not yeah. quite so, what I'm saying, but anyway. So, <laughs> what I said very clearly had to do with carpe diem, and I express it in purely in terms of carpe diem. And I've said this many times that carpe diem is the worst idea that our uh, civilization that Western civilization has ever come up with. Uh, okay, and, first you need to define your terms, uh, Elliot, because I don't know if you even realize that a bunch of people leaving comments on your video have saying you obviously have no clue what the term carpe diem means. Right. Uh, uh, so what is your definition of carpe diem? So carpe diem means make it happen today. Make the thing that you've been 
thinking about doing in the future, do it right now. If you've been thinking about taking that vacation, do it today. Don't put it off. If you've been thinking about quitting your job, quit today. Don't put it off. In other words, make the, the affirmative positive decision in your life today that you've been thinking, well, should I do this? Right. But it has a couple of other meanings that are a little bit, um, I mean, they are, they are also part of sort of the broad scope of it, which is to say, since you are doing it today, that means you are willing to take from the world today what you need to get that thing done. And, and the, the phrase itself means essentially uh, pluck a rose, right? It means, it means go out but there. Mean seize the day is what I've always heard. Right, well, it seize the day, but the word seize is really pluck. And, and it has a sort of secondary idea that you can go into your environment and take from your environment the thing you need to satisfy what you want from the day. And so there's sort of almost this hedonist perspective of seize the day. And a lot of people use it that way. And it might be misused that way. I won't argue that that's not a misuse of carpe diem, but a lot of people stretch the meaning of carpe diem to mean, okay, I have always wanted to go skiing. So let me fly in a plane to this remote place and go skiing. Or I have always wanted a Jaguar, right? Or a motorcycle. So let me just go out and buy one so that I can have it today because it's the thing I've been putting off or not wanting to do for myself. So it's also is a way of giving ourselves permission to abuse the environment, to take from the world in ways that are not compatible with, um, you know, a, a long-term survivability of our species. Um, so even if you go back to the original definition, pluck the rose, right? If everybody plucked the rose, we would be, you know, roseless. Yeah, no right? roses, yeah. We would have we would have decimated the roses. So it is um, there. There's sort of another part of it that's very close to it that that you have to be wary of, which is that it is very close to this mindfulness idea, this mindfulness idea of being be in the moment, right? Be in the moment without an agenda. Just appreciate what you have around you right now, right? Uh, appreciate whatever life has and is giving you right at this moment. But that, that again, is not carpe diem. Carpe diem is not this passive appreciation of whatever your circumstances happen to be. It is a call to action, right? It is a call to, to do something proactive at the world to bring the world to you in a way that um, if everybody was to do it all the time, there we'd just be just, well, it is what we do, right? We we buy a TV because we want to watch the football game. We we buy uh, clothing, what do they call that? Like one use, right? There's, there's these pieces of clothing everybody buy, they'd use it once and throw out, right? Because that's the moment. I want to look good for my date tonight. So there is... Um, this misunderstanding of carpe diem, but that it is sort of um, a cultural misunderstanding, but it is pretty much how it is implemented in practice in our, our culture and society. And that's what I'm saying is the thing that I, I reject. I just, I reject this idea that we should just go out into the world and take whatever we need today because damn it, we're not gonna be around tomorrow anyway. We might as well cut down that tree because we, you know, it's, um, so anyway, so that's a rough outline of kind of my perspective on carpe diem. And I, I agree that a lot of people sort of take it in its classical meaning. Um, and if you go to the pure classical meaning, it is slightly more nuanced and non-destructive, I would say. Um, so there you go. Okay, so what do you think? I mean, you've heard me say, get out there and enjoy it while you still can. What do you think the uh, the most important word in that sentence is? Well, I, I, I'm not going to do a, a <laughs> quiz here with you, but... Um, I mean, what do you hear? I don't know what people hear, because obviously... Well, let I, me tell you what I hear when I hear I you say you that. Hear? You're an intelligent man. What do you hear? I I hear a certain zen about that moment. You know, this is 
this is right now, right? Get out there and whatever the the part of the life we're at, whatever life it's thrown at us, whatever our circumstances, whatever our challenges or sometimes opportunities because things are really spectacular, but not always, maybe not even very often, but um, whatever that thing is, right? There is a certain sacredness in every moment. There's a certain, uh, like this moment won't happen again. Whatever, how, however God awful it is, um, you know, having a, a cop stop you for not having registration on your truck, right? Get out there and enjoy your lack of having your car registered while you still can. It's it's a it's a almost a lighthearted comic um, invitation towards mindfulness and a Zen moment for people. And I, I think I personally think it's beautiful. I think it's a beautiful way well, to honor. Dude, I, 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 I I hate to break it to you. We we've had a failure to we've had a failure to communicate you and I. Well, okay. <laughs> I, I mean, I I I have two meanings when I say that, but you have come up with a third meaning that that I never intended. There is nothing enjoyable about having a a, a fucking cop bust you for no registration on your truck. <laughs> there is no way to enjoy that moment. I don't care. I'm uh, not well, sure you said it in that, that video. If, if anybody from Elliot Jacobson, anyone else has ever suggested that me saying, get out there and enjoy it while you still can is enjoy getting busted by a cop for not having uh, a current registration on your truck. Obviously we have had a miss. Uh, we have I'm had not a miss sure the word enjoy has the same meaning as, as I'm sort of giving it there, right? But no, the, I think you're you're misunderstanding the operative word. In okay. The same, in the same one and I I need to hear one and two then. So what is your one and two? Because because my three the, is the thing. The uh, the operative word in the statement. Get out there and enjoy it while you still can. Is the word it? <laughs> it's the two letter word. That is the double meaning, the, the double-edged sword. I mean, there's all sorts of... Uh, were, were you there when I opened the, the fortune cookie last year in Ithaca, New York? And I opened my... And it said, get out there and enjoy it. While, get out and enjoy it while you still can. Oh, it was... it was. I mean, you saw me unwrapping the 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 cellophane on the fortune cookie and cracking, and cracking it and, and reading uh, what I've been saying every day for 14 years. The it is we we can go on forever uh, about the the enjoy and the while you still can the end is is either here, is it here or here well, it's obviously uh, not here because we're here and go, it's near the it what i what I am implying in my uh, holier than thou self, the it is this beautiful planet that we live on. I mean, this in behind me is my organic garden up in upstate New York. The it is where I'm hoping I'm, I'm heading down in uh, the Yucatan Peninsula in Belize over the next few weeks. Uh, it's the it is the, is the planet, you know, it's the planet. It's 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 just getting out there as, as long as we still have this gorgeous, livable, green, luxurious planet. I, I wrote a whole damn book about it called Peruvian Plunge. All right. I just finished reading the 250 pages trying to explain the it. And that's what I would I wish the word it only had one definition. And that was to get out there and enjoy the whatever beauty and nature and just the, the, the gifts of the universe that you but hold can, on, Sam. The whole you thing. Do, you do not use that phrase exclusively in reference to beauty. You, you I, I know I don't. That's what you I'm use saying. it in I, reference I, to the most mundane parts of your life. 
So, this is part you're mis. I think you're misreading that part. I, I don't intend to. Uh, uh, I, I'm I'm the biggest whiner in the Doomsphere. No, no one can bitch and no, whine and moan about no. being stuck no, in no, a no, 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 no. Mat on a Saturday night in Candor, New York, than I can. You don't hold a candle to the Uber Doomer. But forget well, that. <laughs> we're not going to, well, you, you know, we're not going to get off on that red herring. I mean, I'm so out of that guy's league. Uh, what? what, what? <laughs> but, okay, so so you are the second most whiner in yeah, the Dumas. Yeah, the second biggest whiner. Uh, no, what I, that is what I hear myself saying, but, but, the dirty laundry of the it and the other side of uh, uh, of the it. Now that is the that it is what I call the deep end of the doomsday prophecy pool, which is the ecological collapse of this planet. The end is near for the you know for Mother Nature, whatever word you want to use for it. I am talking about specifically the the deep end of the what I call the doomsday prophecy pool where I swim around in, which is the ecological collapse. But the other side of the it is the shallow end, and that is global industrial civilization, which is getting ready to go. And there, there, there there's some it's some misunderstanding out there that I don't enjoy global industrial civilization. I absolutely love, I, I am the biggest fan of global industrial civilization. I mean, I, I, I would not be drinking my margarita every night if it wasn't for global industrial civilization. I am the single biggest fan of global industrial civilization on the planet. I, I'm right up there with any normie on the planet. So, uh, okay, but that doesn't mean this gets back to your comment that I, that I that, that I don't understand enjoying global industrial civilization is the biggest threat to enjoying the the planet that global industrial civilization is killing and this is one of the philosophical conundrums that uh that that doomers more than most people live in that that is so, trying so let me just, to let me just clarify this let me clarify this so so what i'm hearing you say is when you say get out there and enjoy it while you still can and that it is a hamburger. I, not a not a hamburger. I'm sorry, a chicken sandwich. Right when that it is a chicken. Oh, I don't sandwich. enjoy hamburgers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, <laughs> that is an it, which is part of global industrial civilization. Call it this margarita. That it margarita. that that you want people to understand that they they can go out and enjoy global industrial civilization, but they can also the other it is the natural world it that they can go out and enjoy the spectacularly beautiful, over-the-top, gorgeous day, right? And so you are encouraging people to both enjoy the it that is the beauty and the it that is destroying that beauty also. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Uh, I'm not encouraging people to enjoy the it that is destroying the other it. Uh, however, I, I am just pointing out that my guess, well, it's all coming down together, but global industrial civilization is going to come down a little bit sooner than, and, and the rest of the planet is going to fall on top of it. But uh, so I wouldn't use the word encouraging as much as it is recognizing, and that's more where the why you still can comes in, that... You don't know when you're going to go to the liquor store, in your case, and find a bottle of scotch, or I'm going to go to the liquor store and, and find a bottle of tequila. I mean, I could go to the liquor store tomorrow and, and, and have no more tequila on the shelf, and, and, and that 
very thought of that strikes terror into my heart. Uh, as I say, I, I am the biggest whiner. Uh, you know, when my internet goes down for 30 minutes, I am the biggest baby on the planet. You always have to say second biggest. I'm never. <laughs> I, mean, I, yeah, second big. <laughs> I am the second. I am the second biggest whiner. Yes, on the always, planet. always. <laughs> when my when my internet goes down for thirty minutes, I, I, you know, I, I I absolutely love global industrial civilization. Uh, life would suck without global industrial well, civilization. But I mean, I I put that in a larger perspective, or maybe it's not a maybe it's a smaller perspective that we enjoy the fruits and benefits of global industrial civilization. And, and whether that's, you know, a wide variety of foods and beverages and arts, like you're going to go to the music festival, that's part of global industrial civilization, right? Or or I play music also, right? So we, we have this musical thing where we, we understand um, the value of art, right? As, as, yeah. uh, Art is very much like a, a margarita, right? It's this, this incredibly valuable part of global industrial civilization that that we cherish, right? So, I mean, this is this is kind of you being conflicted, is what I get. I mean, and maybe the question is, how do you reconcile this sort of conflict between at once, um, you know, go out and enjoy industrial civilization, and well you know, let's get rid of humans from the planet because humans are the worst thing the planet ever. There had. you go. You're getting it. All right. How long have you been down in the doom? See, this, <laughs> well, I has not been down here in the doomosphere that long. I mean, he, he's got all of these scientific degrees. That yeah, I'll I know. Have, but I think he's I'm finally coming around. It is how... When you understand, as I, how many times do I say this, on a cellular level, I love that term, that every action, every enjoyment of global industrial civilization is a direct assault on the other side of the coin. How do you, once you understand this conundrum that you and all 8 billion of us live in, how do you comport, I love that word, comport, uh, 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 Terrence McKenna like that word, comport, how do you comport yourself living with feet in both worlds. Uh, Robert Jensen, I've I've had the pleasure of uh, interviewing the professor Robert Jensen, a journalism professor from the University of Texas at Austin, uh, three times now. And he wrote a great essay, which he cannot find to send me about walking with feet in both worlds. Oh. And once you're able to do that, yeah. one foot in global industrial civilization, one foot uh, 110 feet up the top of a Kapok tree in the Peruvian Amazon, and you enjoy both, both feet, uh, how do you reconcile that and how do you spend the rest of your little bit of time here on earth that is the only question the only question that we as individuals need to face in, in the limited time that we have left inside both global industrial civilization and this beautiful planet so i i would there say i would say that that is sort of a perspective within a paradigm and i mean the the other perspective um is that we as, as entities with egos, right? Why should we be doing anything that damages? Why shouldn't we be spending all of our days focused on how we can we can sort of do the least harm? And there are many people, even among the doomers, who have this sort of least harm perspective, right? Like, let me be a vegan is a least harm perspective. You know, let me drive an electric vehicle, right? Let me uh, use a hemp shopping bag. There are all these sort of least harm paradigms. And many of the people who hold those are also doomers, right? So 
So there is sort of this idea that that um, somehow taking advantage of everything that global industrial civilization offers um, without any limits is is sort of uh, still an affront. And and I'm going to say this because I know you have limits. And in my experience of you, you have exactly two limits in your like <laughs> your entire existence. But the fact that you have two limits uh, already puts you into that that other category. What right? are those two in your opinion? Um, I would say they are are hamburger, right, and fish. Are limits that you have imposed on yourself because you understand. I have imposed a limit. I'm not a breeder. Come on, dude. Hold I on. have one limit. I, I, I mean, I could, you know, how many times have I, I could eat all the fucking hamburgers uh, that I want to. to the no, day. no, no. You're I, right. I, I could you... drive a Humvee. I could drive a bulldozer from here to, to Belize and, and, and go to my grave. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. No mistake about it where my limit is. No, no. But uh, no. when I die, my ecological footprint dies with me. And and, uh, and it's so tempting to take the cop that thing of, uh, of the non-breeder that we have a pass to do whatever the hell we want to do. Uh, and, and the fact that I, that, that I don't eat beef and I try to avoid I, I don't eat beef. I don't eat seafood. And to the best of my ability, I don't eat palm oil. But, but but other than those three things. So, uh, so you know, there. but the thing is, Sam, I mean, well, yes, yes, you're right about <laughs> reading. But I mean, the thing is that you do have limits, right? So you have accepted that you want to have a least damage um, within certain sort of constraints you put on on what that means for yourself and least damage means not breeding which i agree with you 100 percent. breeding is the all-time number one by by you know factor of 100 as far as, as you know future damage to the planet there's no question about that so you have even within your um idea of go out and have kids while you still can. You would never <laughs> say that. No, 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 no. If anybody has ever heard me say that, if right. your definition of enjoy it while you still can is to bump out. Yeah, you would never say go out, go out and play with your, you know, your yeah. children while you still can. I need a bit of big asterisk by it anyway. But but I think that that's an important part of of this that that even though you know I didn't get the the details right. That you do acknowledge that in this this duality between enjoying a margarita and preserving the natural world, that there is a certain set of choices that we make for our lives, right? That are consistent with with what we think where we want to balance our lives on that spectrum. That there's no absolute, no, you know, um, to go out and enjoy it while you still can, you must allow yourself these things and deny yourself these things, right? So. You know, I I think that that I, I'm getting a clearer perspective on this for you, and I think it's I think it's fairly subtle and complicated, and and not clear at all when you say it. I mean, honestly, you know, when you use that expression, now that we sort of got into this, it's 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 considerably more thought out, well thought out, and you know, and I I think you tried to explain it in a couple of videos too. I've I've heard you try to explain no, this. Well, I never really have. I, I, I've let people uh, try to figure this one out for their own. Uh, this really is the first time I, I, I've ever in 14 years sat down and, and a, really gotten into what I consider to be 50% uh, of my message. You know, as I was telling Mark on that, I bookend all of my doom and gloom you know, by it's a spectacularly gorgeous day on the planet and get out there and enjoy it while you still can. You know, and in between that, you need to understand the doom and gloom. You you need to under to take that in and it will really help you in your gratitude for, for everything. But, so but let's, the, let me go back to what you just said there, because um, I mean, for the people who are maybe don't really know a lot about your videos, you open 
most of your videos, right? Over and over and over again with sort of a scripted, but it gets sort of modified based on whatever is happening on that. Well, if it is day. a spectacularly it, gorgeous day, but it's, it's, it's an a, not, it's, I don't lie about it. <laughs> but it's always an appreciation of the natural world, right? Yeah, it's not yeah, like, yeah. like this is an extraordinarily beautiful, you know, margarita. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so your opening is always an appreciation of the natural world. But your closing is more of an organic, you know, go out there and appreciate or, or, you know, enjoy. And it can be part of global industrial civilization or part of the natural world. And there's not really a, a predefined which way the domino is going to fall. So the opening is always sort of natural world, but the, the ending can bifurcate, right? Yeah, yeah, that, that that's a little more. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, so, and, uh, <laughs> So I, I mean, you heard that uh, that Leonard Cohen. I wish I could. What is the Leonard Cohen song where that guy is is going down the street? First, he meets this beggar, and, and the beggar's going, you know, you greedy pig. Why do you take so much? Uh, you don't need to be taking this much. And and then he goes down the block, and there's this and, and there's this yuppie woman sitting on her porch, and she is calling down to him. Why don't you take more uh, of this gift and, and this and, and and it's such a great what I think it's called like a bird or yeah bird yeah 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 yeah, yeah. that's the, yeah yeah that's what I was saying yeah 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 uh, but but you know but this is exactly what uh, Leonard Cohen is a major dude yeah I've got a book of his poetry right over here it's one of my favorite I he mean he's a serious dude but this is exactly. What I, I well not exactly but, but 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 this is the sub the, the discussion he was having in that song is, is that uh, you know trying to find that balance uh, and it, it's really pretty much just guilt my, my mother she was a shrink my mother used to say that guilt and conscience were the two most undervalued uh emotions on the planet that if people actually used a little you know all of these people all of these shrinks trying to get people to feel less guilty uh about it and she was out there trying to make people feel guilty as hell yeah, more people would feel guilty that she was a big fan of Diogenes. My my mother, that was her Diogenes, was her favorite. So she's not even she's not even Jewish. You don't even have any Jews. <laughs> I mean, I I mean, I grew up being guilty about pretty much every. But but look, so so I just want you to like like you have this really kind of nuanced, complicated thing, and I think for me, Carpe Diem, right? Carpe Diem is this. Um, sort of cultural meme. I'm not trying to take it back to the original Horace meaning, right? Where it's it sort of had this idea of of mindfulness, but not quite mindfulness. It's more like get out your ass off your ass and do it, boy, right? It's like you want to you think your life is, is going to be there tomorrow. And you know, T. S. Eliot actually uh in his um poem, um, um The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock is all about this character who essentially always thinks that that life is going to happen for him tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Right. And then you, he has the scene where he, he's, you know, sipping tea or he's rolling up his pants and you can, the character is aging and is always putting it off until tomorrow. So, you know, the, the idea that the original carpe diem of, of let's just um, don't put it off, do it right. Don't put it off, do it is, a sort of a philosophical narrative that has been lost. And in my opinion, sort of the, the, the cultural meme of Carpe Diem is go out and and uh, ride your motorcycle through the dunes, right? And destroy the habitat of whatever native species happens to live there while you still can, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what Carpe Diem has become. So when I said it in my soft white underbelly, that's what I meant, right? I, I was not sort of contradicting you in any way. I was really saying it is it has turned into this sort of um, permission to be destructive to the planet in any well, way. Yeah, I, I agree 100% on that. I'm, I, I'm, I mean, I have... Uh, absolutely no argument with that fact that uh, th this whole mindset clearly uh, it, it is the reason this planet's in in the mess that exactly. we're in. Exactly. Uh, I mean, I, so 
we agree on that. I think we agree on both things, honestly. I mean, I, I, I'm not. And, and, you know, there's this thing about like being in the world, people are like, well, if you're, you know, you're such a doomer, why do you do this or that or that? Like, why do you own a car? And why do you go shopping at the grocery store? It's like, it's like, this is the world I live in. I cannot opt out of this world, right? I, I cannot just say, oh, I, I you know, I'm going to go live in a, a sugar shack in, in Hawaii somewhere and grow pop, right? I, I mean, it's not... That's not my life. And so there is this sort of um, sense that that we are attacked as doomers for not sort of disavowing ourselves of everything that global industrial civilization provides, right? I mean, and you've experienced that many times. Like like people attack us for, for drinking uh, margarita. We're, we're we're humans, doomers or humans, just like anybody else, just like the noble savages and everywhere. We're all humans. And uh, if, if I'm a hypocrite uh, or, or whatever, but, you know, because I, I drive again, you know, it's like these people who say someone who drives a gas sucking truck has no right to complain about what fossil fuels are doing to this planet. Uh, you know, whatever. Uh, it, it, I, I did not drive a gas-sucking car for six and a half years. Finally got, so I took six and a half years, I got rid of that gas-sucking truck. And here's what I started discovering. Uh, usually when it was about 110 degrees in Austin, Texas, and, and I was I was either riding my bicycle or taking a bus down to the Harry Butts supermarket in South Austin, Texas, as I would go into Harry Butts supermarket on my bicycle in the 110 degree heat, and every single thing I was buying at the Harry Butt supermarket was brought directly there in an 18 wheeler and unloaded and probably flew in on an airplane uh, or a cargo ship in, in LA, got on the 18 wheeler. And, 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 and so I follow the chain of fossil fuels from uh, let's say coffee from Peru. Uh, how did it get from Peru to the Harry Butt supermarket so I could ride down there and give myself heat stroke on my bicycle to buy the, the coffee from Peru. You know what I'm saying. And, and right. so I could be high and mighty that I'm not part of the problem. I am, I'm not a hypocrite. Uh, I don't use fossil fuels. You're so full of shit. Uh, you know, and it, and it took about six years and uh, then I started, you know, each year I would look uh, at how many more cars were on the planet uh, than a year before. And, and a, a few doomers uh, going vegan or giving up their gas sucking car or whatever, uh, it, it, it's going to make no difference. Uh, if it helps you sleep better at night, and I'm not telling people... Uh, not to do this. I highly encourage people to be vegans and 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 ride their bikes everywhere. Right. Uh, don't don't misunderstand me. I'm not going to do it if you know. I if if I honestly believed that everybody else on the planet was going to stop. Uh, you, you know what I'm saying. But so this Sam, is one of these Sam, all for one, one for all type things. Sam, do you remember when you and I walked around Santa Barbara and, <laughs> and I was whining to you? I you said, are. this is one of the most walkable cities yeah. on the entire planet, right? And I was pointing where the grocery stores were, yeah. where the houses were, and how <laughs> people weren't on bicycles. They weren't How many bikes were we walking? On that how many on that beautiful, what was it, 72 degrees? Seven, like five miles. Gorgeous. Right. Many, and we, we passed like, like zero, zero <laughs> people carrying shopping bags, not not holding shopping bags, not a backpack of shopping, shopping bags, not a bicycle with shopping bags. And I am here in liberal 
the liberal <laughs> mecca of Southern California yeah. and Santa Barbara with Ellen DeGeneres and Oprah Winfrey, right? I mean, I am here where we have Whole Foods and every other, you know, yeah. Trader Joe's, every other, uh, you know, upscale grocery store um, where people can feel proud for buying their, their uh, you know, coffee beans that are each handpicked <laughs> by, by a Kachina doll, right? Um, I mean, this is an amazing place to live. And people all are driving their Prius or their, you know, Elon Musk mobile. I mean, it's just I like that Musk mobiles. It's it's just crazy for me, right? So, so you know, I talk about hypocrisy, right? The hypocrisy of of um, sort of entitlement in this culture, where if you just do barely enough. If you do barely enough to satisfy yourself, then you are entitled to rush through your days, taking everything you can from the planet and, and you know, furthering its destruction. Um, and that's that's what goes. I mean, I see it more than you do. Right. Because where you live, you're out in the middle of fucking <laughs> nowhere, <laughs> nowhere. Right? <laughs> I, I see this day after day after day. I am out walking every single day saying how many people are there on bikes carrying groceries? How many people are walking carrying groceries? I went shopping today at, at Trader Joe's carrying a backpack. Yeah. I filled my backpack, right? And and the person said, oh, so you came on a bicycle. Like, no, I walked here. Right? <laughs> didn't I even walked. use the metal, the mining in a bicycle. I did not even use lithium with child slavery, yes, to, to power my electric bike. That's so cool. But you went back and put your groceries in your damn refrigerator. Well, I did do that. Thank <laughs> you very much. That. You cannot. Did do that. <laughs> yes, and I'm so grateful for the electric power grid here in California, by the way. We in California are very awesome, and you should come visit us here again very soon. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, so, honestly, so uh, Sam, I mean, people out there, you know, they, they see you, they see me, you know, mostly they see you because you're much more of a YouTube item than I am. And they don't realize, and I'm saying this quite honestly, what a what a truly awesome individual you are. I mean, this is something that... that um, I mean, okay, YouTube verse out there. It's like like this guy over here or over here. I'm not sure which side he's on for you. Is really a remarkable person. Not just because he he makes these videos and he reads these things and he's honest and open with you and all these things, but because this is somebody who has has a complete worldview that's consistent and cogent and well thought out and and based on um, a you know, years and years of thinking about deeply about issues that that very few people want to touch on. So I just want to you know chainsaws. As yeah, I don't want to give you. As no, that twelve will tell you, I do own not one but two, but three chainsaws now. <laughs> right. So, it, it, anybody who reads Peruvian Plunge, just understand that the author of Peruvian Plunge owns three chainsaws. Well, okay, so I love my chainsaw. I, I in my lifetime, my have owned one chainsaw, and I purchased it uh, for sixty four dollars <laughs> um, from a guy who stole it from uh, some. I did. I I suspected it Probably was stolen. stolen from me. <laughs> and and it was the most awesome chainsaw in the world, and my ex-wife probably still has it to, to this day. So yeah, chainsaws are good at age 65. I would not go near a chainsaw. When you were here, we were talking about chainsaws, and you understood uh like how let me just say it in real simple terms, how stupid I thought you were for using the chainsaw. I've almost killed myself three times in the past 18 months with chainsaw. <laughs> I should be dead, literally, literally. I'm not joking. I should be dead right now. Yeah, but. no, no. You you told me a story about some uh, uh, pants or something you put on that protected you from, yeah. like, essentially uh, cutting your leg off and bleeding out from your femoral artery. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> like Sam, never, 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 please, never touch a chainsaw again. You're, you, you <laughs> please, you are too valuable of a human voice on this planet. Hire someone. Hire the kid, the Amish kid next door to do this. And then let him cut his, let him bleed out in my back 40. <laughs> I mean, anything. 
So at any rate, um, so do you have any more questions about my rather superficial misunderstanding of, of Carpe Diem? No, I, I think that we uh, uh, agree on what you, on, on on what you were talking about. I just wanted uh, I was just a little taken aback by your uh, your vehemence talking about doomers who uh, who say pretty much what I have said every <laughs> every day for fourteen years. And it just I, said, and it just said it 30 minutes. I wonder what Mark was thinking. I would like to have seen the look at it. Was he like totally poker face when you were, when you were talking like this? They were like, like, well, Sam was just 30 minutes ago. Uh, Sam was sitting here on this same stool. Right, is this guy your friend? You just contradicted him. Do you know you just made him look like, are you kidding me? No. No, he, he didn't he say just, that. He just, he just, he just what he said. Face. What he said is, "You are so much more intelligent and articulate than Sam." I'm so yeah, glad yeah. to have you. I, I'm sure that I'm, I am. I, no doubt that's what. Uh, no, we didn't say that. <laughs> no, he he <laughs> really appreciated both. I think he really appreciated both of us. And I think, you know, your comment that really ring resonates with me personally. Uh, that you said in your episode was that if you bring 30 doomers together, yeah, yeah. they will have 31 different yeah. definitions of what it means to be a doomer. I thought that was brilliant. That was just yeah, a brilliant summary. <laughs> you know, so so the fact that we have this, you know, different perspective on this this part of, of things, I think is part of just what, what the doomosphere is about. You know, what, for, for me, I mean, my, you know, you have your sort of um, well-formulated, my, you know, it's always been this sort of three-pronged thing of service, kindness, and generosity that I've always sort of defaulted to. And I was seeing this psychiatrist uh, um, up until he retired about three years ago. Oh, really? And uh, he was actually an expert on samurai swords and all this, you know, <laughs> he's like like this reincarnation Zen guy. Um, really awesome psychiatrist. Gave me a lot of good meds, by the way, some of which I still have uh, left over. Um, but I remember but, you giving me one of those when I oh, was did there. I? Oh, no, 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 no. I did not give you one of those. No, you're making that up entirely. I'm just having fun with it. He actually <laughs> sold it to me for five dollars. Yeah, no, I sold it twenty dollars. <laughs> Please, at least I didn't give it to you. Um, no, but but um, you know, he, he when I told him this idea of kindness, generosity, and service, he he kind of reflected on the Zen aspect of that, right? which is that that's a, that's a way to live your life, right? And the one thing, I mean, even though um, get out there and enjoy it while you still can and kindness, generosity, and service are sort of these, these separate paradigms, right? I think they do have that, that sort of overlap of appreciating it, right? Appreciating the moment, appreciating whatever the thing is, whether it is global industrial civilization or, or nature, right? Whatever the it is, that's, that's the thing, right? And they they have that sense of appreciation, but not abuse of of the natural world at the same time. So, so I got that much of my out of my psychiatric care, at least. Well, all right. Well, I hope that was worth all the money you spent for. No, all the money the insurance company. Hey, there you go. Well, I'm just going to go sit in a, uh, hopefully sit in some jungle in Belize by a uh, waterfall. And after I drive to Austin, Texas, get on a jumbo jet to Cancun. Are you, are you taking that thing with bus. you? Are you taking that thing with you to, to uh, you must be, right? No, not this year. Sancho is not, uh, but I'm hoping that uh, one thing I'm going to go down there. Is, is is try to find out what is involved with bringing a uh, a dog down there. Your your favorite person in the Doomosphere who used to live in Bailey's took four dogs down there. He told me and uh, him and just he, he goes, I threw my dogs in the back of my truck and just drove down there. Well, it's probably oh, easier the, to go down there with them than come back with them. So that's yeah. you know. So That's if that issue. man knows what he's talking about with taking dogs to Belize more than he does, uh, than he knows about how long humans have before we go extinct, 
and I can believe a damn word out of his mouth, uh, <laughs> I'm hoping it's not going to be that much problem to take my dogs to Belize, according to that guy. So when are we going to see you again? Uh, well, guys, I, I honestly don't know what it's going to look like now. As I mentioned on our last little podcast we did together, uh, you'll have to go over and listen to my uh, m- my little evil twin over at Humpty Dumpty Tribe is where if you actually want to see my, you know, my day to day adventures down there in Mexico and Belize over the next few weeks, that's going to be over there at Humpty Dumpty Tribe. And I honestly don't know what Collapse Chronicles is going to look like uh, for the next few weeks. I, I'm I'm hoping uh, that we're going to have a good solid internet connection and uh, it won't be that much of an interruption. But uh, if, if if you don't hear much from me, you can, you can believe that I am getting out there and enjoying yeah. it. It. Both sides of it. I'm enjoying both sides of it while I still can. And that's the uh, that just just know that about Sam, that he is enjoying both sides of it while he still can. And that's all I can uh, do with myself. And I highly recommend you get out there and enjoy it while you still can. This is my it tonight, my friend. My it is empty. Well, you need another one. So. So we're going to wrap this up. So it might be March before we uh, we do another one. They have to get together. Well, I know you're going to be back because you have you have three or four tiny houses that you've rented out at some point. So you have to get back for them, right? Well, that's not that's going to that's not going to be till the end of April or or May. But when I get back, I'll get back on March third. And I think South by Southwest Music Festival starts about a week later. So let's definitely do this again, uh, like somewhere around March 5th. Sounds good to me. Somewhere there. And uh, if I'm still alive and haven't run off with some doomer chick into the jungle in Belize, never to return, uh, we will pick up and uh, and I will give you the highlights of what I did on my winter vacation in, in Belize. I am looking forward to it, Sam. Well, Sam, this has been absolutely fabulous. Uh, you know, we obviously completely both simultaneously agree with each other and disagree with each other about exactly the same issue. So I am uh, thrilled by that. And I just want to thank everybody out there who is stuck with us to the end of this yeah. uh, this fine episode. Um, and let's <laughs> all wish Sam uh, happy travels down to Belize. And uh, may he climb a tall tree while he's there and overlook some distant jungle for us all. So everybody, uh, it's been a lot of fun. And it we'll has been. see you all later. Bye, guys.